So the new MacBook Pros are finally here, and we know they've got better battery, better performance, a new design and all that good stuff. But they are also very, very expensive, and this is where a lot of people can make a mistake. I'm going to preface this video by saying that all of these are just my thoughts and what I believe that you should get according to your workflow. So do not believe that any of this is concrete or it's factual, but it just depends on what you want to use your computer for. Let's get right into it. So first of all, let's talk about the different configurations we've got. We've got the 14 inch and the 16 inch versions. Now, these two laptops are different and very alike at the same time. Let's start with the screen. So both MacBooks come with the Liquid Retina XDR display and they have almost the same resolution, but that on the 16 inch is a little bit higher and the pixel density is exactly the same. Both of them are also 120 Hz refresh rate, so you're not missing out on the high refresh rate display if you decide to go for this cheaper and smaller MacBook Pro. Moving on to the battery size, the 14 inch MacBook Pro has a 70 watt hour battery and the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a 100 watt hour battery. Now, the difference in battery life might not be very noticeable, especially when a lot of people are working with their computers plugged in or, you know, you're not in a place where there is infrequent power. Now, if you're someone who travels often or you feel like you're going to do a lot of work on the go, maybe you would want to go for the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the bigger battery. But with the efficiency of the M1 Pro chip or the M1 Max chip, I strongly believe that battery life should not be a problem regardless of the configuration or the size you go for. As for storage and memory, both sizes come with the base storage of 512 gigabytes and the max storage of eight terabytes, which is absolutely insane. And as for the RAM, it starts at 16 gigabytes and it goes up to 64 gigabytes in the max configuration. Now, I don't believe that anyone really needs eight terabytes of internal SSD storage on your MacBook. I mean, of course, if you're maybe some high-end video editor and you work with very high fidelity files, 4K, 8K files or something like that, yeah, you might need a bit more storage. But this reminds me of the M1 iPad Pros that came out not so long ago and everyone going for the 16 gigabytes of RAM configuration and they just could not capitalize on the hardware because the software wasn't optimized to use that. That might be a similar situation with the new MacBook Pros. You might not really need eight terabytes of storage. You might not really need 64 gigabytes of RAM if you are not one of the hardcore, you know, borderline insane, you know, workers on your computer. For most people like students, photographers, graphic designers, and even some video editors, one or two terabytes of SSD should be enough for you. And you can always get expandable storage, which is cheaper than going for the eight terabyte version of this computer. It's just my opinion anyway, but I believe that you can save your money very, very significantly when it comes to storage options. Now for another major decision that someone can make when it comes to getting a new MacBook is what processor are you going to get? The M1 Pro or the M1 Max? Now the M1 Max processor is the one that has 32 cores and up to 64 gigabytes of VRAM, which is going to be insane for any graphic intensive process like video editing, After Effects, motion graphics, or even gaming. So if that's something that you've been looking forward to more graphic fidelity on your MacBook, then you're going to want to get one with the M1 Max processor. But if that isn't really your priority, then I believe that you're going to be satisfied with the performance of the M1 Pro chip and as, 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 that has, as that has an 8 to 10 core CPU or 14 to 16 core GPU. So the performance on that is definitely no slouch either way. And between the 14 and 16 inch versions, when it comes to the processors as well, you can get the exact same configurations, the exact same number of cores in GPU and CPU, and the exact same number of cores of GPU and 60 on the 16. Now, as for ports, you get the exact same port configuration on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros as well, regardless of if it is the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. You have your three Thunderbolt 4 connectors, your MagSafe connector, your headphone jack, SD card slot, and your HDMI slot, which is actually quite awesome as well. And you can charge either using the MagSafe connector or a Thunderbolt port. So Apple aren't really forcing you to use proprietary charger this time. And I think that's a really good idea. And they're all made with 100% recycled aluminum and then that new design. And the, one of the most recognizable changes is on the screen, on the display, and that is the notch. Now the bezels have shrunk quite a lot and then everything else has been put into that notch. And a lot of people who saw the notch expected, you know, a face ID array, but we already have such ID on the MacBook Pros, so that is, you know, the biometric authentication. The notch only contains the 1080p webcam. And the webcam is pretty good. I mean, you're not gonna look like a potato during video calls anymore, but that's all there is in the notch. And I strongly believe that, yes, while the increased screen real estate is a very, very big uh, addition and it's a very nice advantage and the design does look quite nice and attractive, it is mostly for 
brand identity, in my opinion. I believe that, you know, Apple have done it again just so that their products will be identifiable and unique looking and distinct. Well, at least until some Windows manufacturers start copying and putting notches on their laptops as well. But let's see how long that takes. And then finally, the place where I believe some people can make a big mistake when it comes to their new MacBooks is with the price. These new MacBooks are not cheap. The baseline M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook comes in at $2,000 and the baseline 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook comes in at $2,500. That is a lot. And then the more you improve your specs, the more expensive it gets. And let's not even get started on the prices of the M1 Max MacBooks. So let's start eliminating things that we don't really need. The 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook, while it gives you two extra inches of screen real estate, uh, a little bit more battery, that's all it actually has to offer. So for more money, I don't think that is, you know, good enough value. If the M1 Pro chip is good enough for everything that you're going to need, then definitely go for the 14 inch version. It's gonna be easier to carry around. It's lighter. You can connect it to your external display and just forget about it. It has a good cooling system. The battery is gonna last you a long time and the performance is nothing to slouch at. I mean, no need going for the 16 inch version. It's just not worth it. And if you're going to get a configuration with the M1X chip, then well, you're already prepared to spend more money. So you might as well just get whatever configuration floats your boat. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think about the new MacBook Pros in the comment section right below the like button. If you enjoyed the video, then please like and subscribe. It will really mean a lot to me. And check out my other videos that will be showing on the screen right now. Peace.